what's happening everyone welcome back to the workshop i hope you're all doing well now in this video i'm back making some lamps now one of my favorite most favorite things to do is to build light fittings and lamps and if you've been following my channel you've seen me make multiple lamps over the last year or so including that nice big live edge fitting i put in the whiskey room i made a lovely uh, shadow box light i've turned a few lamps as well from plywood and other such things and i really enjoy making light fittings it's one of the most like i say one of the most enjoyable things i get to do because I get to mix my electrical side with my woodworking side. Now these ones are kind of completely unique, something a little bit different, something out of left field. My wife wanted two lamps or two lamps to fit on two uh, bedside lockers and uh, she wanted tripod style uh, legs on the lamps. So I kind of came up with an unusual design. Normally with a tripod lamp you would have a shade up on top here. I decided to hang the bulbs underneath. So we have two vintage style bulbs with some vintage elements in it. We have some lovely rope cord that intertwines through the legs and more importantly we get to practice practice some joinery. So we have splayed or angled dovetails in the top of this holding it all together. So I show you how to do that as well in this video. So without further ado let's crack on and build a couple of tripod uh, unusually styled lamps. Let's do it. Okay, so very quickly, let's go through the materials I'm going to use for this. Now, I'm going to use what I have in the workshop, and that's available to me, so I don't have to go and get stuff. So I have a piece of sapili here, which we're going to use for the top, so we need to mill this up. It's uh, roughly an inch thick, but by the time I have it milled up, it'll probably be down to maybe 20 mil, so maybe three quarters of an inch. I have some maple here, so we'll use this for the legs. So we cut all six legs out of this one, making two lamps, so we need six legs. That's, again, roughly 25 mil or an inch thick, and by the time we mill this up, it will be around 20 mil in thickness, I would imagine. So that's the maple for the legs, that's the CPD for the top, that's what we have in the shop. Now, let's look at how we get the dimensions. Okay, just before we get to the dimensions, I'm going to show you the electrical equipment we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using one of these classic style vintage bulbs. Now, if you've been following my channel, you will have seen my light fitting that I made for the whiskey room. I used these bulbs. I also used these brass Edison screw lamp holders. So they just screw in. It's the large Edison screw, so it's the E27. So an E27 bulb holder. And we're going to be using some of this braided cord or flex. So it has that lovely rope effect on the flex, so it's nice and decorative. So that's what we're going to be using. Using, and we use this now to get our dimensions. Let's do that. Okay, so now we have to determine the angles that we're going to cut our dovetails to, display on our legs, and the height of our lamp. So we're going to have to do that using our components. So again, just make it look aesthetically pleasing and to kind of keep it to the fact that these are going to be sitting on a table. They're table lamps, so we don't want them too tall, we don't want them too short. So what size do we want to make them to? So this is the lamp holder we're going to be using and this is the bulb. So we have to allow for that height. I want to be able to see a small bit of the cord. So I want the light to be hanging inside in the tripod frame. So I want to see some of that cord. So that, we have some dimensions there. I'm just going to take my ruler. Um, around 400 millimeters I think is good for a table lamp. You could take it to 500 with a shade. We're not going to be having the shade. So um, I'm just going to keep it around 400 millimeters. That's about 16 inches. So if we look at that and just eyeball that roughly and see what we're looking at there. So I only want a small bit of this cord. I want the bulb to be kind of in the center. Again I don't want the lamp to be too high. So I'm just eyeballing this now trying to make a decision on what we want to go with. I might split the difference between 400 and 500 and maybe go to 450. I think that would give me uh, just enough, I think, of a distance to hang all that fitting in there, to have it roughly center in the legs and still be a decent enough height. Without, but it would have been too big or too high. Um, I think that should be good. So 450, I think, is good. Now, the side on the angle for the legs, I think roughly 10 degrees. So if I hold the ruler there just like that, uh, I get my, my um, sliding bevel. I get this part roughly level. So I'm just eyeballing this now and uh, hold it about there. Display on the legs, that is about 10 degrees because I have this set to 10 degrees already. So um, I think that's good. I think with the width of our top triangular part and display on the other legs, that should put our legs about I would say 12 inches apart maybe so something like that so that should be good we don't want to make it too wide we don't want to make it too big we don't want to take up too much space so any more than that 
it's going to have a big wide base on it. Display might be too big or too narrow. So I think 10 degrees looks good to me. So that's what we're going to go with. So that's going to be it. So we're going to make our height of our um, lamp 450 millimeters. That is 16, uh, 17, 18 inches tall in Imperial for my American friends. And uh, 10 degrees of splay. So let's get on. We know what dimensions we're working to now. Let's get on and make the lamp. Okay, so now that we've decided on our height and our dimensions, our angles and all that good stuff, we can now dimension up the stock. So I'll get on and prepare this stock and when that's all done, we'll jump back in. Okay, we have all our pieces milled up. This is gonna make the top of our lamp and these are our six legs. So we're gonna cut a triangle piece out of this. Now the width of this is the width of this because it's the piece I'm using. So it ended up about 95 millimeters in thickness. And then the thickness of the piece itself then, or in width, I should say 95 millimeters. The thickness is 20 millimeters, just about three quarters of an inch. And all these pieces are exactly the same. So they're 20 by 50, or that's a three quarters by two inches roughly, is what they're gonna end up at. Now, we take this to the miter saw and cut it out. So we're gonna make an equilateral triangle for the top to hang our bulb out of. So there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So that's 360 degree uh, corners. That gives us an exact equilateral triangle. So we'll set that up on the miter saw now. Let's do it. And we also have to put a 10 degree cut on all of these edges as well to allow for display in our legs. So let's get on and do that. Okay guys, so before we go to the miter saw, I have to put 10 degrees into one of these edges because obviously I can't do that on the miter saw. I can cut this way and this way safely, but if I put this against the fence of the miter saw and try and cut here, it's not very safe. So we're gonna do that on my planar thickness or uh, jointer if you're in America, or my planar if you're in Ireland or the UK. So I've set my fence exactly 10 degrees off zero. So I've zeroed my uh, level box here and just put that against the fence. So that's 80 degrees, so this is zero degrees. This will now be 80 degrees and that'll give me 10 degrees of difference. So we'll just run this over this and uh, we put 10 degrees in this. Okay guys, so we have our 10 degree chamfer in the end of our piece, hopefully you can see that there. So we're gonna cut it on the miter saw now, putting the straight edge against the fence. Now I have a full video on miter saw tips explaining the angles on the miter saw. So if you're new to miter saws, you need to pay attention to this part. I need to cut this at 60 degrees. However, the miter saw is now at zero degrees. So this is 90 degrees off the fence and it's 90 degrees off the bed. So in order to leave myself with 60 degrees, I now have to move the miter saw 30 degrees. That will leave an angle of 60 degrees in here. Again, I have a full video on this. I won't get too far into it now at the minute. So I'm just gonna move my miter saw around to 30 degrees. So I've moved 30 degrees off zero and that will leave me with an angle of 60 in here. Now, I also need to put another chamfer cut into this as well at 10 degrees. Now, because I'm putting the 10 degrees off 90, or off zero, I can just set the miter saw up here to 10 degrees and that will give me what I want. So again, I have a full video explaining all this. If it's a little bit confusing now, don't worry about it. Go back and watch my miter saw tip video. It will all make sense. So I can actually use the markings on the miter saw here and set that over to 10 degrees, just like that. Now, we're all set up to make our cuts. Let's get on and do it. Okay guys, so there's our top of our light fitting all cut now. It's all cut at 10 degrees all the way around our equilateral triangle. We have two of those lovely stuff, happy days. So you can see how they roughly go together. So you put the legs, we'll match the angle in the legs now and they will sit just like that. If I can get all these held together, give you a rough idea. And that's the way our lamp is going to go. So 
it won't be too big they'll fit nicely on top of a desk and we don't have much more than i'd say maybe 12 inches there in total which is fine for the footprint of the lamp now one small issue that i have with this these pieces are 20 mil roughly three quarters of an inch a little bit under three or a little bit more than three quarters of an inch however the tops are quite small now the whole point of this project is to cut in angled dovetails so without the angled dovetails then we're going to lose the whole look so i want to be able to see three dovetails in the top of this to uh, give uh, some nice joinery effect to the lamp now like I said, these are awful small, these are very thick. If I was to put three, say 20 mil deep dovetails into this, there would be almost no material left in the center and you could just break this, uh, snap it. So I need to thickness these guys down. So I'm gonna take five mil, almost a quarter of an inch. So six mil is about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna take these all down to 15 millimeters on the planar thicknesser. And uh, yeah, that should give me enough material, hopefully to keep this uh, structurally strong. It's not gonna to take too much weight. It's literally just hanging a bulb off it. So with all the glued surfaces, it should help keep it all together once all the dovetails are in. But because of so much small material, when you're putting in enough dovetails, it could just split apart and it could all be for nothing in the end. So I'll take all these down. That's the long and short of it. And when I have that done, we'll jump back in and we'll cut these pieces and then we can start marking out for our angled dovetails. Okay, guys, I've taken them all down to about 12 mil. That's half an inch exactly um that should be good it should give me enough room on top to have some material left over and it'll make it a bit more slimline a little bit more elegant and it'll uh, be plenty strong for what they need to be so now we want to cut all these so i have my mother so again set to 10 degrees so we'll put a cut on the first one i'm going to set up a stop block right here run it against it flip the piece over and put a 10 degree cut in the opposite direction so it'll be 10 degrees on top to match our triangle and then it'll have a 10 degree foot on it as well so it'll sit flat on the table so let's get on and do that now set up a stop block if you want all your pieces to be exact so you only need to measure once and then just put them all against your stop block and put them in place now these new f clamps i'm using from Souter shop are seriously beefy i highly recommend you check them out guys they're quite good indeed so i'm just going to use this to hold on my stop block and we can get cutting let's do it Okay, so all our legs are now cut, or at least they have the 10 degree chamfer in both ends. So that 10 degree cut matches our top perfectly, and we have a 10 degree cut in our foot as well, which makes it sit flat on the table. So happy days. Now, on to the front part, and that's cutting the dovetails. So it's all hand tools from here on in. No more noisy, dusty machines. And the hand tools are the way I like to work. So let's get on and cut these. Now, there's not much more to doing angled dovetails than doing standard dovetails. Just a little few things that we have to watch out for. But I'll take you through the process. I'll show you how to mark it out. And uh, yeah, it's simple enough. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's start by setting up our marking gauges now. Nice and simple, we have two marking gauges here. It's always handy to have two marking gauges because you can set one and just leave it. So this one I've set to five millimeters. So that's gonna mark this width of our tails. I'll show you that now in a second. Uh, so set to five mil, leave that one alone. This one, we need to mark the width of our tail board. So this is essentially our tail board or our top piece. Just gonna turn that over and just let that cutting wheel hit the top of this table. And then we're perfectly set to the depth of our pin board i should say and then we can use that to mark our tail so let's get on and do that now okay guys we have our leg in the voice and we're marking this end for our tail so nice and simple like i said there's not much more to marking angled dovetails than there is to marking standard dovetails right so i have my five mil marking gauge or my marking gauge is set to five mil i'm just going to put that to the edge mark the line both sides that gives me the width of my dovetail. Now I can go along and mark all my legs exactly the same. So all my dovetails are exactly the same width, nice and simple. Now I'm gonna take a one and six dovetail marker. I'm gonna use one and six because it slightly um, exaggerates, I suppose, a dovetail. You can see that angle of the dovetail a little bit more. It's nothing to do with strength. It's nothing to do with structure. I'm just using this um, so I can see that dovetail a little bit more. It's a little bit more of an angle on a one and six, that's all. So in order to line this up, I'm gonna use a knife, but I'm not gonna mark it with a knife just yet. I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna put the knife in my marking gauge line. I'm gonna slide that up to it. And then I'm just gonna draw with my pencil down here. I'm gonna do the same on this side. 
put my knife in the line, put my marking gauge up to the knife, and then just draw it in with pencil for now. Okay, now I'm gonna take the one that we marked our pin board with, so this is the correct depth. Now, I don't wanna scribe a line all the way across the front of this, because obviously I don't wanna see that line, so I'm just gonna roll it in. Now, let me get the camera set up from the edge, because this is the important part. Okay, so I have it set up from the edge, and you can see the angle that's in this piece, this 10 degree angle that we put into it. That makes it just a little bit more tricky to mark out, not much more to it. We can mark our shoulder lines nice and simply by keeping our marking gauge flat on the top of this, matching that angle. So I'm just gonna roll in my shoulder line, keeping my marking gauge nice and flat on the top of this angle. I'm just gonna fill that in with pencil, so hopefully it'll come out on the camera. You guys can see that there. So we wanna match that angle. Now for the front edge, I can leave the marking gauge, sit flat on it again, and I'm just gonna mark in from the end of my shoulder line right there into where my pencil mark is for my dovetail. It's just a bare little roll in. Again, I'll get this on camera and you guys can see it, because I don't want a marking gauge line going across the front of my dovetail. I can do the same on the other side, so match the angle. Roll in my shoulder line. That's the bit that's gonna be getting removed. So making sure I'm keeping that good and flat, and then just roll that across the front to my dovetail line that I marked with my pencil. Just like that. Now for the back, I can't obviously match the angle, if you guys can see that, because it keeps my blade off the back of my piece. The blade is not wide enough. You can buy wider blades for doing this, um, so that it will hit the back of your piece and you can mark it in. So I'm gonna to have to angle this slightly just to get that in. Make sure that I'm keeping it pressed onto this back edge. Now I'm only riding along the back edge, so I have to be careful here and just roll that in. Just keep it nice and easy, nice and steady. Try and be as accurate as you can. Obviously you're only sitting the marking gauge now on that edge rather than on the whole face, but it's not too big a deal. Just roll it in, just like that. Now, you can see the back of the dovetail is higher than the front, so we have to match that angle there when we're cutting our dovetail with our saw. That's the only difference now. I'll give you a close-up of that so you can see it. You can see why I didn't want to scribe that line all the way across, because I didn't want to be dealing with a marking gauge line, so I only marked it, rolled it in from here to my pencil mark. Then I took my dovetail marker again, dropped my knife into my marking gauge line up here, and I've now scribed in a knife mark. To be extremely accurate, it's always nicer to have a knife mark because you can drop straight into the gauge and you can ensure that you're getting that exactly right and it'll give the saw something to run against as well. So that's it, nice and simple. And you can also see the line now, it gets runs from back to front, it matches this 10 degree angle. So we have to just match that with our saw. So we just cut this exactly like we cut a standard dovetail. Just make sure that we stop our saw at 10 degrees that we match this angle down here, nice and simple. Or if you're not confident, stop above this marking gauge line and stop above this marking gauge line, so your two shoulder lines, and then we can finish it with a chisel. So the closer you get with, it, with the saw, the less chiseling you have to do after. So now I have to go cut all these out, so I get on and do that, and uh, I have six of them in total to do, so let's do it. Okay, so when it comes to cutting out these dovetails, like I said, not much more to it, just match the angle and you are good to go. So stay on the waist side of that knife line. The most important cut on a dovetail is the one on the top here. We need to keep that perfectly square, perfectly plumb. Once you do that, the angle that you match the saw to down here, if you get that slightly wrong, that's not a big deal. The most important thing is that the two cuts on top are square because you will be matching your tail to your pin board. So you will mark your pin board off your tail so you can match those angles that you cut in your pin board. So concentrate on making sure that you get this saw cut on top perfectly square and you will be good to go. And then just match the angle on the way down as best you can. <laughs> I just want to check on the front and the back because I can't use my front to visualize what the back is doing. So I'm just going to get my angle my saw up, get my saw down on my shoulder line in the front and then just work it down to my shoulder line in the back just like that. Now, here we go. That's all we have to do. Now we can cut this off. Same on this side again. Staying in the waist side of my line, making sure that my top cut is perfectly square and then just match that angle on the way down. All 
Okay, so when it comes to cutting off the cheeks or the sides of our dovetails, again, remember that this is at 10 degrees, so we don't want to cut this square. Obviously, we have it marked now, so you can follow your marking knife line. So again, stay in the waist side. Again, if you're not confident, move away from your line a bit more. You can always chisel back to it, and it's easier to chisel back than it is to cut with a saw. So I'm going to keep quite close to mine. Again, I want to be kind of plumb straight down with this, but I want to keep along this 10 degree angle here. So just going to drop my saw just inside my waist. And just cut that off just like that. And we can work back to our marking gauge line. Okay, so here's a little tip for you guys to get nice, crisp and clean shoulder lines on your dovetails or any joint for that matter. Now, some of you guys will have seen me use this before, just a pairing block. If you watch any of my Japanese joinery videos, you'll have seen this. So what I've done is I've just taken a block that I know to be exactly square. So this face is perfectly square to the base and I've lined it up perfectly with my marking gauge line, that knife line. That's why it's so important to use marking knives and marking gauges so you can get everything exact. So what I can do now is drop my chisel exactly into that marking gauge line and even use that chisel now to set up my block. So my chisel is perfectly flat against my block. So I know the angle of my block is correct. It matches the 10 degree angle on the side of my shoulder line from my dovetail. Now I'm gonna pair this. Now this is hard maple. Hard maple can be quite difficult, especially when you're pairing end grain. So you might have seen me do this before as well. A little squirt of water onto end grain um, makes it a lot easier to pair. Just a small squirt. Just let it soak in for a second. It just softens up the end grain and uh, makes it, like I said, so much easier to pair. Now, I won't take this all in one go. I'll take a small bit off and then we work back to the knife line. Let me see if I can get you guys a closer look at that. Okay, so we're rightly zoomed in. I'm just going to pair this. Now, like I said, I'm not going to take it all in one go. So I'm just going to start right out at the edge and you can see just how soft that little bit of water has made that end grain. Now, obviously, this sh chisel is razor sharp also. I'm going to try not get my head in the way. Now, that's most of it taken off. Now, I'm going to drop into my knife line and just pair straight down. Now that's it, the barest little bit, as you can see, came off that. And that is a perfectly crisp cut shoulder line at the exact angle that it needs to be. And just pay particular attention to that corner right in there. Just make sure that is completely cleaned out and that will help your joint sit together nicely. Okay, so that's one angled dovetail all cut out. Nice and simple, like I said, not much more to it, just match the angle, that's all. So I have five more of those to do, I'll get on to that, and then we'll jump back in and I'll show you how to do the tails. Let's do that. Okay guys, so we're on to day two and I'm cutting out the sockets or the tail board. There's not really any tails on this, it's just really a socket that we have to cut out for our dovetail. Now, as I suspected, it is very delicate. I've already broke one piece and there's not much material between the sockets on this. So hopefully when the dovetails all go in and glue in together, um, it will strengthen up this piece. It should do, but we have to be very, very careful. So I'll show you how to cut out a sloped or angled dovetail socket. There's not much more to it. Again, it's just a case of match the angle. So let's jump in, set up and do that now. Okay, here's a quick close up on our second piece. Now I've already one of these cut out already, so we're cutting the sockets into this. Now, first thing I've done, I've marked each socket. So on the first one, it's one, two, and three. So this is four, five, and six, and I've marked the legs to correspond. Very important that we match the tails to the sockets that we mark them out, just in case there's any discrepancy, we are um, matching tail to socket all the way around. Now, the grain is going in different directions on this. It's not ideal to cut a dovetail into side grain. It's so easy to split off this end. There's not much material here. You could put a split straight through here. So it's better to air on a little bit loose than a little bit tight. And there won't be much material between the sockets either. So we've got to be very, very careful. I've already broke one of these, so I don't want to break another one. And like I said, I've marked them to, to match the legs. Very important. Now, there's not much more to marking out an angle dovetail or a splay dovetail than a standard dovetail socket. Again, it's just matching this angle here. So it's a little bit lower on this side than it is on this side. And once we maintain that angle through it, we're good to go. So let's mark out number five. Okay, so let's match leg number five to socket number five. Now I've marked the center of the dovetail. I've also marked the center of this piece. So I can just line the two of those up. I have a box just behind me here. So you can take any height of a box and just set it back the right distance till you match the angle in the front here. Just get my tail sitting on that nicely. Get everything lined up just like you would with a standard dovetail. Take my marking knife and just scribe that just like that. Now this is where it's very, very important that you have 
your tails cut square across here because if they're not square and they force this socket apart then this whole piece is just going to disintegrate so take your time to make sure that your tails are perfectly square across the top and that will save you some headaches now that's that marked take my small square and square those lines down just like that front and back And then we're going to set our marking gauge. So again, with the marking gauge, I'm just going to set it to the piece that I'm using. Now I'm checking every single one of these legs to make sure that I get these 100% accurate. Like I said, I have no room for error here. And it's better that they be a little bit loose and a little bit tight. But uh, yeah, that's set to that depth now. We can scribe our socket. Okay, so we mark the socket the same way we mark the tails. We've set the depth of the piece that we're cutting in. I'm just gonna let this sit on the bevel and mark between my two lines, just like that. And again, I have to sit on the back edge here and angle this guy in so its cutter is hitting the back of the material. So I'm actually just riding along the back edge of this and just mark that socket between my two lines again. Nice and simple, just like that. Now, cut it out exactly like we would cut out a standard dovetail, like I've said, just match the angle. Okay, so there's all the sockets cut out. So you can kind of see the pattern that I'm going for on top. It's pretty weak in here, a little bit stronger on the back with a bit more material. So hopefully adding in the dovetails will straighten this whole thing up. But it's a bit of a risk, we're going to take it, I like the design idea. Now, I'm just going to cut out the rest of this with a chisel. I'm going to use the leg, one of the legs, as a guide for my chisel. Apologies for the rain noise now guys, it's a storm outside, there's not much I can do about the weather. Because I have a 10 degree cut on the end of this leg, I'm going to use that, I'm going to line it up right with my marking gauge line. And I'm going to use that as a guide for my chisel so that I'm matching that angle perfectly. We can just drop the hole fast on it there. Little bit of material on top just to protect the leg from getting damaged. Knock that in place. Make sure we're perfectly lined up with our shoulder line. And then we can work that down with the chisel. Okay, so when it comes to fitting the tails into the sockets, I just want to be super careful. Again, they're all numbered and I have to make sure that they always go back with their same number, just in case we force anything. I want it to be tight, but I don't want it to be too tight. So I'm erring on the side of being a little bit loose because I cannot force these tails in whatsoever. So just barely tap it in. Okay, that's a pretty good fit. Slight little gap here, that's fine. If I have to fill a couple of tiny little hairline gaps, I'd rather do that than split this piece uh, into pieces. So it's very, very delicate now, this piece. So we have to be very careful. So I get the rest of these fit, then we'll have a look and we have to taper the legs after this. Please come out. Please. Oh, there we go, thank goodness. Okay guys, so I've marked all the legs out for tapering. So I've just reduced the base from two inches down to three quarters or 50 millimeters down to 20 millimeters. And I'm gonna just taper it right up to the edge of the shoulder of the dovetail. So I cut up most of the waist on the bandsaw and then I'm gonna finish this with the hand plane. So let's get on and do that. Okay guys, so there we go, that's the legs done now. Again, just moved most of the material on the band, so ran the hand plane over it just to plane back a nice straight edge. So we have nice tapered legs now. Just makes it a little bit more elegant, not as big, blocky and bulky, and it fits in with the design of all the kind of triangle shapes that uh, is the kind of theme of this lamp. Now, on to the electrics. Um, I've just sanded everything to 220 grit, so we're almost ready for the final assembly, but we've a few holes to drill now before I do that, so the electrics are the next part. So we've got a couple of decisions to make here. Obviously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang my light inside in the frame of the legs. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that just like that. It's gonna be a, kind of a lantern effect and the legs will cast shadows then. So it's kind of like the shadow box light I built. I really like the effects of the shadows. It's more kind of mood lighting that I'm going for with this. Now, we want 
to make the flex or the cord um, part of the design. Obviously we're going to see this, we've no way of hiding it, so we need to make it a feature. So that's what we're going to do, that's why I'm using this rope style uh, cord. So it's going to come out of the top, I have to put a crush gland in the top here on a threaded ferrule, so that's going to sit down inside in that. That crush gland will then crush onto the um, flex or the cord and stop it slipping down through the light. It's very same as the one that goes on top of the light fitting. I'll show you that when we're um, assembling all the electrics. Now, that's going to go down through this, so we have to put down, put this down through the leg. So, what we're going to do is actually weave this in and out through one of the legs. So it's going to going to go in and out through a few holes and I think four holes is going to look the best. So it's going to kind of be laced through a leg and it's going to be part of the design feature. So we have four holes to drill in one leg on both lamps and we have a center hole to drill in this. So we'll do all that then we can glue this together. So let's get on and do that. Is we are all glued up. I've sanded them up and I've just hit them with a coat of Danish oil. I don't want to bore you guys with that because you've probably seen me do it a thousand times before. Now, they're looking quite good. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. It's a bit of an unusual design, but if you don't risk anything, you never gain anything. Now, I've added a couple of extra holes in where the cable is going to go in and out or the cord is going to go in and out. I had it woven in and it was just too big a gap. Too, the loops were too long, I thought. So I've added an extra couple of holes just so it weaves in and out that leg a little bit better and looks a little bit nicer. Now, I'm getting ahead and I'm wearing in the lamp parts. I'm not going to do that in this video. I have a full video on how to wear lamps, everything you need to know about all the different holders, different bulb types, whether you put a a switch in the cord, a switch in the fitting itself, all that good stuff. There's a full video on it. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. So I'm just going to get on now and get the electrics into these lamps and get them all ready. So not much more to it. We just have to weave the cord in through the lamp. Let's get on and do it. Okay guys, so there we go, two complete tripod lamps. A little bit of a different take on a tripod legged lamp. Normally the lamps would be up here with the shades on top. I decided to hang the bulbs from underneath just for something different. And I'm uh, really happy with how they came out. They're completely unusual. They mightn't be to everybody's taste, but I really like designing and trying out new ideas. And I'm pretty happy with how they come out. I really like the rope uh, intertwining in one of the legs and heading out the back here. The bulbs are really nice. That's one thing I should say to you. If you build a light like this, make sure and use LED bulbs so there's no heat off these whatsoever. They look a little bright on the camera because it's hard to catch what a bulb breed looks like on camera but I kind of roll in a little shot there you'll see the kind of classic um, filament that's in this it's all done with LEDs like I said there's no heat so I don't have to worry about the wood being burned or the flex being damaged the fact that it's so close to the bulb that's not actually an issue like I say these are completely cold and they will remain cold which is really nice so that's kind of it guys um, like I said hopefully you've enjoyed it if you like the video give it a thumbs up 
any comments, any questions? What do you think of the design? Is it something you'd like? Is it something you want to try? Again, it was kind of an excuse for me just to do some joinery, show you guys how to do some um, splayed dovetails and uh, just make a couple of nice lamps for my wife. She wanted two tripod lanterns or two tripod lamps to go on two desks. So hopefully she will like these ones and like uh, my original take on the tripod lamp. So that's it guys, I'm gonna get out of here now. I shall see you in the next one. We'll have some more projects coming up and tool reviews and all that good stuff. Thanks as always to everybody on Patreon who continue to support the channel guys. It is very much appreciated. Now, it's time for a beer. I'll see you in the next one.